Hello, welcome. Today I want to talk about um, addiction. And basically what addiction is, an ego problem. It's, it's a symptom of um, stubbornness, an ego stubbornness. You see, the easiest thing in the world, you would think, would be to say, I'm, admit you're wrong and say, I'm sorry. Especially if it was to a good person. See, a lot of times in life, we don't want to admit we're wrong to other people because when we were little children, people forced us to say we were sorry, even if we weren't. Or we would have been sorry, but because they forced us to, we rebelled. See, it's just, it's another trick of the devil, if you'll pardon my saying so, that operates through people. See, if your mom was uh, angry, if she resented her husband, if she was on drugs, if your dad was an alcoholic or angry or had various issues, then there was something wrong. See, people are possessed. See, one of the things that's, that's a real blessing is when you, when you get older, I mean, when a person gets older, when they get to be 30, 40, 50 years old, now all of a sudden they see themselves acting just like their parents. And then they realize that their parents weren't doing it on purpose. See, when you were a little child, see, even, even as little children, although little children are close to God, children are close to God, what they need from the parent is someone to validate on the outside what they know on the inside. What they know in their heart is right. Little children, um, they know a lot. Okay? But they can't always verbalize it because they're just little children. They need someone on the outside, like Father, to validate what they know in their heart. But when Father's not there, or when he's absent, see, or when no one is there to validate what you know in your heart, well, then that's not good. But what I was going to say is, although little children are close to God, um, Nevertheless, they are little egos. See, we're all born with this kernel of pride that we inherit from Adam. They say an apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Well, we're all like, we're all like Adam and Eve, except some of us yearn for something different. And, and our yearning is sincere, or when it becomes sincere, and we seek, and then we find, okay? But the vast majority of people never find because they don't yearn enough, see? But anyway, so little egos want to, what is it that egos want? They want to be praised. They want to be worshipped. They want to be admired. They want to get their own way. And they resent people who, um, who get in their way or who disappoint them or who don't do their will or who don't see them in a good light. See, that's typical ego. So even little children are that way. Now when they're little children, then they're, they're willful and they want their own way and so on. And they always want what's wrong for them. Well, it's kind of cute, isn't it? Yeah, but it's not cute. It's cute when they're little, but then they little, you know, what's the expression? Not naughty egos grow up to be nasty egos, okay? It's not cute anymore when someone is 30 years old and willful and stubborn and wants to be worshipped and praised and never wants to admit they're wrong, then it's ugly. It's an ugly thing. And in fact, it'll ultimately result in their demise, their destruction, suffering, and then their demise, and they will hurt their children. They will pass on to the next generation what was passed on to them, see, except for those few who yearn for like I said, something true, something good, something noble, and who are willing to give some things up, like give up resentment, for example. So now, getting back to what I was saying, is when little children, so you were, you undoubtedly, if you're like most kids, you resented your dad. You resented him for not being there for you. Okay, you resented your mom 
for being willful or for being sick all the time or for complaining or for resenting your father or for turning you against your father. See, when mom resents her husband, then very often, especially because the kids are closer to mom, she's able to turn them against her dad, see. So maybe you saw that happening and uh, you resented her for that. But for a variety of reasons, but then even for the fact that they didn't let you have your, your own way, you might have resented them. Even if your parents had been perfect, you still probably would have resented them for not letting you have your own way or for not worshiping you, or seeing you in a good light. See? That's the way egos are. It's an ugly thing, really, is pride. But, like I said, when you grow up, you get to be... 30 years old or 40 or 50, then all of a sudden you see that you're just like your parents and then you realize now, see, when you were a little child, you were harsh on them. You judged them harshly, see. But now you see that they couldn't help themselves. They couldn't help themselves. Something was operating through them. Oh, what I was going to say earlier is when you, when you follow the typical pattern that egos follow, resenting your parents, becoming angry, looking to the world for comfort, looking out in the world for love and for comfort and for praise and for admiration and for, see? When you follow that typical pattern, then uh, what happens is that the world gets inside of you. See, if you had always stayed close to what you knew in your heart, if you had never resented your parents, if you had never resented other kids for teasing you or for having more than you or being prettier than you, if you'd never resented your brother or sister for being smarter than you, or see, any of that. And you had just gone about your business, okay, then uh, you wouldn't have been penetrated by what was on the outside. But because you did resent, okay, you were penetrated by it. And then what was on the outside got on the inside, okay? So now, if you're like most people, you have a problem, and that is that, you, first of all, you yourself, like I said, are an ego, and you typically don't want to admit you're wrong. But like I said earlier, we don't want to admit we're wrong when we're kids, when people for, try to force us to be wrong, to, be, to admit we're wrong. We don't want to do that. And then later, if you did sometimes admit you were wrong, then people used it against you. They blamed you or accused you or use it against you. See? So you resented, you resented that. So then you never wanted to admit you're wrong to other people. However, there is a, an admitting you're wrong, which is admitting you're wrong in your heart, quietly within. When God's light is there showing you, which we know as conscience, it should be our guiding light. It should be accompanying us all the time like beautiful sunshine or a beautiful strain of music. It's always there. See, people like Enoch, Elijah, Noah, Christ, Paul, Mary, Ruth, these people walked with God, okay? They walked with God. And so Abraham, they had this light with them always, see? And they, they were friends with it. But what has happened is because you resented other people, especially resenting your father, and your mom, now you have conflict with the inner light. Okay? So that's not good. But that's the way it is. You have conflict with the inner light. And so now you know it is conscience. So what do you do? You flee from conscience because you don't want to admit you're wrong. See? So you have that problem. Your basic ego stubbornness. Then the other problem is that there's something in you that's not you. And it, and it got in there when you resented your parents, resented other people, see, or when you wanted something too much and did wrong things to get what you wanted, or when you took drugs, things like that. It got inside you, okay? And so there it is. Now it is in you, and it doesn't want you to admit you're wrong. And for that reason, undoubtedly, it doesn't like me, it doesn't like the idea of meditating with my meditation. It doesn't like any of that. Because it, if you were to 
begin to meditate properly and come up to the light. Then eventually you would see that part of you that's not really you, but that has been controlling you your whole life. And like I said, it gets in mostly when we resent other people. Because you see, drug taking, drug taking comes from um, resenting other people. See, if you never resented anyone, you wouldn't have any conflict with conscience. If you didn't have any internal conflict, see, then why would you take, why would you need to take drugs? What would you need to escape from? See, you wouldn't. And you would, and reality would, remember I had talked about Noah and Enoch, Elijah, Christ, they walked with God. See, for, for the person who walks with God, the present moment is filled with um, wonderful things to discover. Every moment is, uh, is uh, it's like an, it's like an advent, life is like an adventure, a journey of discovery. And it's never boring. Never born. So, um, one would that you would never want to take a drug, see, or even smoke a cigarette, or anything, or take a pill, or smoke a marijuana, and be, any any of that would interfere with being in the, in the moment, in the present, in the presence, in God's presence, in the present. Okay. So if you find yourself smoking or taking drugs or anything like that, it means that, number one, there's still something about yourself you don't want to admit. And secondly, there's part of you. See, part of you wants that, likes that. It likes uh, taking drugs and resenting other people and escaping. See, floating away on daydreams and visualizations and pills and at marijuana. It likes that, is to escape from reality into unreality because that's how it controls you and that's how it lives through you. That's how it saps your life. See, takes your life. So, um, so now you see what the problem is. So the first, so the main thing you have to, you should do is begin to meditate so that you can separate from, from it. See, and it talks to you through your thoughts and you think it's you. You think it's your own thoughts. Okay? And, and it, it eggs you on to do the forbidden. And it, it shies away from, from truth and from honest people, from scrutiny. And it shies away from um, coming to, to the light. See, it's opposed to that. See? See, a part of you has become worldly. That's why you can't speak up to people. If you have a problem speaking up to people, which a lot of us do, a lot of people do, you have a problem speaking up to people. Part of it is conditioning, of course, but it's deep, it goes deeper than that. It's because part of, see, when, when you resent other people, for example, like say you resent your mom, okay? You, then, then what is in her gets in you. And then it in you then, see, it does two things. It looks, to, it looks to people like her that have her manner, her willfulness, her cleverness, her seduction, her whatever it was. See, it, they look to that as a model for growth. It looks to them for a model for growth. But it also resents them and wants you to resent them, okay? But it also... Um, it doesn't want you to speak up to them, see, to draw the line and separate from them, because it it is the same. It is them in you. It's her in you, and her in you. See, shakes in its boots before it's God, which it wants to become, which is her, see. And so it wants to complete itself using you until it is complete in you and then you don't and then you won't even exist anymore it'll be her in you or it in you whatever whatever it was that came from who, whoever on the outside that you hated for example 
it's in you. And then it in you then will have its way with your kids and your grandkids and your other people. See? And it, it wants to, it wants them to hate you, it in you. See? So when it hates you, when someone hates you because of your confusion, see, you don't even realize how confusing you are. Because you have two minds. Remember, Christ said the double-minded person. See, he's unstable in all his ways. See, you're, con you're a mass of confusion. You do s things that aren't quite right, and you, sit, you know they're not quite right, so then you try to make up for it by being extra nice or extra sweet. You're too nice, or you're, witch you're either witchy or you're too nice. And you confuse the children. And then they resent you when they, when they see you manipulating them. See? That sort of thing. So you need to do, you need to meditate so you can separate from it. Okay? So you can see that it is not you. The real you. Your soul. The real you. Okay? Maybe the real you wants to come to the light. You want to come clean. You, you want to be sorry. See? You want, you're yearn for innocence again, sweetness again, and what is good. You don't want to hate people anymore. See, maybe you don't, but it doesn't want you to repent and be sorry and come clean and turn to God. See, it doesn't, so it opposes. So it, it has no power. Here's what you need to know. It has no power over you. Okay? It has no power over you other than the power that you give it by struggling with it, or resenting it, or giving in to it. So what you must learn to do is separate from it, and just watch it. Watch all the games it plays, all the tricks that it plays. Begin to see that it's not you. See? Because its thoughts, its, its desires, the real you is ashamed of them. See? And if it was your very own thinking, some of the thoughts that you think, see, if it was your very own thinking, why, you could change your thoughts at will. But you can't. Okay. So know now that it, it is, you are not condemned. See, that's another trick. It wants you to think that you're condemned, that God hates you, that you're too far gone, and so on and so forth. No, that's just another one of its tricks. See, it wants you to believe that, but it's not true. You are not condemned, but it is condemned. It is going to hell, but it wants to drag you to hell with it. That's why you must separate from it. And there's no better way to begin to do that than to use the little meditation that I have made, which helps you to separate from thoughts and emotions and observe them. Okay? My name is Roland.